There was a question about why SpaceX chose stainless steel over carbon fiber or other alternatives like aluminum lithium. And Elon gave a really, really in-depth explanation. This is absolutely brilliant. Are you ready for this? Let's go. I believe you chose a stainless steel for the vehicle. I could be wrong, but what, what, what were the technical and engineering reasons for that? And don't stint on the details. Because uh, to a lot of people intuitively, they would think of uh, steel as being heavy. Um, uh, and rockets need to be light. So, well, that seems pretty a pretty odd choice, making a, a heavy sounding thing for rockets, especially orbital rockets that need to be very light. The nature of Earth's gravity being quite strong and a, a dense atmosphere means that you really have to have an incredibly good propellant mass percentage, uh, and you have to have very efficient engines to get anything to orbit at all. We, we started off with, with an advanced composite. So in, intuitively, if you ask people, understand materials, they will you know, say, we want to make something incredibly light. Um, they will, they'll say, probably you want to use state-of-the-art uh, carbon fiber composite. Um, that's usually what they'll say. And that, that's what we started out with, which was um, really a, a very advanced carbon fiber. <laughs> Actually, it was, a, it was only made in very small quantities. Uh, it cost um, $130 per kilogram. So it was a very expensive material. And there are some challenges if you want to make the primary structure out of uh, carbon fiber, which is that uh, you've got to make a uh, contain uh, cryogenic uh, fluid, and and you need a uh, gas in, in in sort of what's called ullet gas, pressurization gas, to pressurize the propellants in, in the main tanks and and feed the uh, engine turbo pumps with a with a given inlet pressure. So for if you have if you have a, a, a carbon fiber tank, because it is, tends to be porous um, and also um, potentially uh, flammable when subject to uh, uh, warm gaseous uh, ox pure oxygen. Because our, our vehicle is autogenously pressurized. So the oxygen tank is pressurized with gaseous oxygen and the fuel tank is pressurized with gaseous methane. The, re the resin and, and the carbon in, in the um, carbon fiber is potentially flammable um, with, 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 with hot, pure uh, oxygen gas. So you'd have to have some kind of liner. So when you look at the, the, the full uh, mass and complexity of a carbon fiber system, you, you start having things that reduce the mass efficiency of, of carbon fiber, such as having an inert liner um, and being worried about gas permeating through the, the carbon fiber and that kind of thing. So, but, but it still would be an, it's still an okay choice. Um, however, um, we were having a lot of trouble making progress with carbon fiber because um, this is a nine meter diameter rocket. Um, and so you, you're wrapping carbon fiber um, with typically in this case, uh, 60 or 220 plies, depending upon where you are on, in, in the tank. Um, and you have to get all of those wrappings uh, accurate and not to leave bubbles or separator sheets or all the things that typically happen, or, or you've got to scrap the whole thing. And then you've got to, to, to get good, good mass properties, put it in autoclave um, and put it under you know, a, a lot of pressure. Um, and then, then you need a gigantic autoclave because it's a nine meter diameter with a 70 meter long boost stage. <laughs> so this is autoclave from hell. And we, we, we just weren't making rapid progress. Uh, with this materials. So then the next step, the next thing, the, the, the other two materials worth considering are high strength form of uh, aluminum or aluminum or uh, potentially steel. So for Falcon 9, we use um, aluminum lithium, uh, which is the highest strength to weight uh, aluminum alloy that you could use, uh, very difficult to weld, uh, but that's what we use for the primary structure of Falcon 9. But, but the problem is it's, it's, it's very difficult to weld. You need to do friction steel welding uh, and also the, the material cost is quite high. You know, that's, that's sort of material cost arguably on the sort of $40 a kilogram level. I just want to interrupt really quick to say that was a pretty good rundown on the problems with carbon fiber and aluminum lithium. That carbon fiber, and there's going to be more as he talks about steel next, but carbon fiber, very expensive, difficulty innovating. It was hard to make progress with it. Aluminum lithium, expensive, hard to weld. And then the weight advantages aren't necessarily what you think they are, because if you use carbon fiber, you have to do these other things that make the carbon fiber way more. Again, more of that coming as he describes the advantages of stainless steel. The interesting thing about a 300 series uh, stainless steel is that uh, its properties at cryogenic temperatures, uh, its, its strength properties increase dramatically. So if you were to look at the material properties at room temperature, you'd be like, oh, it's not that great. But now go, now go uh, look at the temperature properties at uh, liquid oxygen temperature. Oh, actually much stronger. Uh, also no, uh, no, no meaningful increase in brittleness. So you have, it still high, has high toughness uh, at cryogenic temperatures. Uh, it is much stronger depending on how, how cold you go. 
up to twice as strong. And if you, you can also cold work it. So you get, if you, if you go sort of full hard cold work and, and do the final bit of cold work uh, at cryogenic temperatures, uh, you get uh, outstanding uh, strength properties, which are roughly equal to an advanced carbon fiber. For Starship, the, it, it, both the fuel and the oxygen are cryogenic. So this helps, helps a lot. Whereas for uh, Falcon 9, the, the, you use cryogenic oxygen, but um, kind of room temperature uh, uh, kerosene for fuel. So anyway, so in, in, we're, we're both, uh, this is a quite a long explanation, hopefully interesting. Um, uh, if, if both fuel, fuel and oxygen are, uh, fuel and oxidizer are cryogenic, now you get the strength properties in, in the primary structure of, of both tanks. So both are very strong, uh, very tough uh, and resilient. Uh, also very easy to weld stainless steel. And we started off with stainless steel 301. That, that did have a, a, some fracture toughness issues at uh, cryogenic temperatures. Um, we switched to 304, and now we have our we developed our own alloy, which is 30X, which is the better than either 301 or 304. And 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 anyway, so so now 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 stainless steel only costs about four dollars a kilogram. So we went from one hundred and thirty dollar a kilogram advanced carbon fiber to four dollar a kilogram stainless steel, uh, from one hundred and twenty plies to one ply. It's just coil from the mill. Uh, basically the same strength and, and very high toughness and, and resilience and don't even need to paint it, which is great. Paint, paint on a big vehicle weighs many tons and it's a big, quite difficult to paint big things. So that, and, uh, but now there's another advantage. Obviously you can tell I'm a huge fan of stainless steel. I, stainless steel and I should get a room or something. Just another bit I loved in the middle of a serious conversation about engineering. I'm a big fan of stainless steel. We should get a room or something. Just, just so comical. Like he just drops that little comical bit in right in the middle of this intense engineering discussion. I love his ability to do that. And making the vehicle reusable. Um, so now the, the, it's coming in very hot. So the, the ship is coming in uh, at hypersonic velocities, coming, you know, sort of, uh, kind of like a Mach 25 uh, entry velocity. So uh, th this is what sort of just obviously just melt it. <laughs> if, but if you've got steel, your melting point is much, much better, higher than aluminum. Um, and you can have it handle much better temperatures than, than uh, carbon fiber. Because the, the the resin tends to have problems, uh, like you can basically go, you know, you know, any, anything much above, say, two hundred Celsius, or for carbon fiber or aluminum, is is you start falling off a cliff from a strength standpoint. Um, but but for steel, you go eight hundred, and and it's it's fine. Even a thousand can be fine. So for for the ship, this means that the heat shield mass is significantly reduced because the, the heat shield um, mass is determined by the temperature um, on the back of the tile uh, that, and that, that it then transmits to the hull. So the hull, if the hull is steel, um, you can have thin uh, heat shield tiles, whereas if the hull, hull is carbon fiber or aluminum, you have to have thick heat shield tiles. Uh, and you also need no heat shielding at all on the leeward side uh, of the ship. So, it is actually lighter than the most advanced carbon fiber vehicle. Just love how Elon was able to break down all these different advantages that steel has over carbon fiber or aluminum lithium that you don't need extra things. Yes, steel is heavier than carbon fiber, let's say, but with carbon fiber, you need insulation here, you need lining here, you need thicker heat shield tiles, you need paint. And when you add up the weight of all the other things you need to make carbon fiber work, all of a sudden steel actually becomes lighter and steel's cheaper and steel's easier to work with because you can weld it. You don't have to do 120 layers of carbon fiber to make your thing. You just have one layer of steel. So much easier, so many different ways, less cost, and it ends up being lighter even though steel is heavier overall because of all these other things that come into play. It was long, but that was a great explanation. There's a little bit more coming. I, I thought uh, that the uh, steel substituting for aluminum on re-entry made some sort of sense. I, I didn't realize any of the other stuff. So it is the, right thing. The, the right thing, and then it, it's, it's just and and it's it's the the cost is ridiculously low. <laughs> it's like four dollars a kilogram, <laughs> uh, even for the special alloy that we're developing. Although it requires like a, a mill run, um, it, it's not using anything super exotic. We might throw a little exotic spicy something in there. But it's a small, it's, you know, it's going to be like 0.2%. It's still going to be like maybe $4 a kilogram, maybe $4.50. Um, and then it's just very easy to, 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 to weld. Yeah, I, I love it. It's great. And then if, if we want to just add something to, if you want to, you know, uh, it's easy to repair. It's if you want to, um, uh, you know, add a 
sort of uh, something to carry some wiring or plumbing or whatever, you just weld it right on. It's super easy. <laughs> it's great. It's okay. Thank you. So please check out the t-shirts, elonbits.com. Check out my other videos. Support this channel on Patreon. Thanks to the Vasa Law Firm in Sweden, all my Patreon supporters for helping this channel grow. Check out my political channel, The Daily Lie. Link to that in the description below. And thank you so much for watching.